Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well, so please check the link in the description for more details. My name is Sava, and today we're going to investigate a key concept in microeconomics and relevant mathematical applications that can be used to derive the market equilibrium for given linear supply and demand functions, and most importantly, what impact various government policies, such as taxes or subsidies, can have on such markets in terms of the deadweight loss and the distribution of taxes between consumers and producers, in terms of the consumer surplus and producer surplus. And next, let's calculate the producer surplus and the consumer surplus, remembering the insights we have just learned. So basically, what is producer and consumer surplus? Well, those are just the areas of the triangles that are formed by the equilibrium price and the demand and supply curves. As those are maximum reserve prices and those are minimum reserve prices for consumers and producers respectively, the surplus would be the difference between what you were willing to pay and what you actually ended up paying. And here, this particular consumer or over here, someone who had a reserve price that's quite close to A, saved or gained in terms of their uh, private subjective value that much, this particular length of this line. A consumer here was willing to pay a little bit less, so in terms of their subjective value, um, get, getting something that they valued at this much for the price of that much, they were gaining this much and so on and so forth, with the marginal consumer at the intersection line being indifferent between actually buying the good they value at PE for PE or not buying it. So they have got a surplus of zero. And here, as we've got a continuous function, we can describe the total consumer surplus as the area of this triangle. And we can use geometry to easily calculate this area as this line is perpendicular, as this is a perpendicular uh, plotted from the equilibrium point onto the uh, price axis, onto the y-axis, and we have got a right angle triangle with one of the sides being equal to QE, equilibrium quantity, and the other side being equal to the difference between A and the equilibrium price. So actually, we can calculate the consumer surplus, CS, for consumer surplus, as a half of base times height. Or, for the right angle triangle, the height is actually one of the sides of the triangle, so that makes it a lot easier. So a half of the difference between A and the equilibrium price times the equilibrium quantity as those are the sides of the right angle triangle we were investigating. And now we can simply plug in the values in terms of A, C, B, and D, and get a half of A minus A, D plus B, C over B plus D, times the equilibrium quantity, which is, as we recall, A minus C over B plus D. And now we can simplify this particular equation a half stays here, and A can be transformed into a fraction with the denominator B plus D. So here we would have AB plus AD minus AD minus BC over B plus D. Here we see that AD gets cancelled out, and here we can extract B in front of the parentheses, and that's what we're going to do a little bit later. And here we've got A minus C over B plus D as our equilibrium quantity. So actually, we have got a half times B times A minus C over B plus D times A minus C over B plus D once again. So this actually is quantity squared. So simplifying it, we have got our consumer surplus equal to B over 2 times A minus C over B plus D quantity squared. For the producer surplus, the concept behind it is very simple and similar to the consumer surplus case. 
as this particular producer sold something that they were valuing at that much for PE. So basically, their subjective gain, their surplus, is the length of this line. This particular producer was valuing the good uh, they had to part ways with uh, at that much, and they have sold it for this much. So this is the value of their personal surplus. However, this particular marginal producer who was valuing their good at exactly the price uh, of the market equilibrium um, are indifferent between selling the good for PE or keeping it for themselves. So they gain a producer surplus or supplier surplus of zero. And as we're dealing with a continuous function, we can treat the total societal, if you wish, producer surplus as the area of this triangle. And this is also a right angle triangle, as again, this line is perpendicular to the price or y axes, and its length, length of the perpendicular, is equal to quantity of the equilibrium. And the other side, the base of this triangle, is equal to the difference between uh, the equilibrium price and C, the minimum reserve price of the producers. So let's express that in terms of formulae. The producer surplus PS would be equal to a half height times base. And the height is, again, the quantity of the equilibrium. Quantity supplied equals quantity demanded. So here we would have A minus C over B plus D. And the height is the difference between the price of the equilibrium minus C, the minimum reserve price of the producers. And here we can express our PE again in terms of A, B, C, and D, the uh, equilibrium condition we have solved for over here. And we can express it as AD plus BC over B plus D minus C times A minus C over B plus D. Now again, uh, brushing it up a little bit, representing C as a fraction with denominator B plus D, we can have AD plus BC minus BC minus CD over B plus D. And in that instance, just as AD was cancelling out in the consumer surplus equation, BC is cancelled out in the producer surplus equation. And we are left with AD minus CD, with D being the common factor that we can bring in front of the parentheses. And we again need to not forget about the quantity A minus C over B plus D. So here we would have D over 2, D half, times A minus C over B plus D quantity squared. And we see the nice relationship between those two. They are very similar formulae, and they are only different in terms of this particular factor over here. Here we've got the uh, demand slope coefficient B, and here we have got the supply slope coefficient D. And that would be very important for the distribution of taxes paid by consumers and producers respectively. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance or economics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much and stay tuned.